like how it lifts off. It isn't so bad. Also, I've always told you to save those your dirty ink and pour it in a container and let it dry out. So this is what I do with some of it. Not all of it. I do other things with some, but I'm going to take a little alcohol. Give it a little bit in there. Cover it, swirl it, and bring your ink back to life. So this is all dirty ink. Nothing special. Shake, 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 and pour it in the container. You can do it a few times if it's really dried out, because mine's pretty dry. I live here in Arizona, and I put it outside to dry. I'll even put it in some of my other containers. Just go back and forth. Then it will definitely thin down. Here's another one I got just to get it activated. And then you can pour it in. You can see how dark it gets. Now I'm going to take my paper and not the shiny side, but the dull side and put it in and get it completely covered. You can move it around. You can do this. I just sometimes just leave it in here for a few hours and swish it around. doesn't matter about the back side, but we want good coverage. Now, if you put this on top of your, your palette, you're gonna watch and see what happens. It's gonna make shapes. So you can actually leave it here and let it dry and you get these cool shapes. You may not want the shapes, you just don't do that. You just take it off. And isn't that funny how that takes up the shape? But I kind of like, we'll use it. So um, the other thing is, is if it isn't as dark as you want, you can always take your tray again, pour some more. You look how dark that is now, because it had time to sit. And I wanted to show you real time so you can get an idea on how it works. There. So here's one I did with a lot more intense dark color. It's a big sheet of uh, photo paper. So I'm gonna show you how, what to do with this. And we'll put this aside to sit and get nice and dark. I'll put it back in my container. Okay, cover up your container or put it out back outside to reactivate, but you can see it's starting to really reactivate. And it's just a mix of all the colors I use. There's a little, see how that's coming back to life. So this is a really great technique. So let's just play around because I'm just going to show you how it works. So here's a sheet that I've already done. And I'm going to show you how I do my lifting. So let's just get the palette out of the way because this is a big sheet. And what do I want? I don't know. You know, I kind of like to do it by the seat of my pants. Sometimes I start off thinking it's going to be flowers and it turns into something else. But uh, I'm, th I'm thinking flowers today. So I'm just going to pour some alcohol. And I also want to keep a little blending solution on hand. And I'm just going to put a drop of blending solution down and see what happens. Now this has been dry for almost a year just because I haven't gotten to it. But I can come and manipulate it a little bit. And because it's photo paper, I can uh, really lift quite a bit of the ink without a stain. At least not as bad a stain. So I'm almost seeing a rose come out. So I'll just kind of use alcohol on the edges so it won't be as strong. Because you know that blending solution is very strong. So we'll make a big giant rose. And all I'm doing is smushing into the base color. Maybe you want some leaves. Who knows? Just scribble. Let it run. Let it do whatever it's going to do and use your imagination to find the elements that are in here that you like. And then you can take a paper towel and you can blot the excess off. And that'll also give texture. See that? I could turn this into a sunset so you can start to see the flower anyway. But I, now that I'm looking at it, I'm seeing a sunset. So that's what I mean about watching things. And I almost see like this is a water line. So I'm just going to scribble back and forth. And this is the sun and clouds. Do you see how easy it is to change anything? And again, blot. You could even smear a little bit. Don't be afraid to try different strokes because it gives you a different look. 
Look at that. Now I'm just going to pop some more alcohol down and just watch what the clouds, what clouds come out of this. So I got a sun, so it's going to kind of come forward. I'm thinking sun, I'm thinking ocean now. So my flower turned into an ocean. And then blot. So this is a, this is a kind of a different technique, kind of fun. It makes you learn to see like you've never seen before. And just blot it down. And this is all leftover ink. What color are you going to get? Who knows? But you can come on top again and add your own colors. But in this technique for today, we're just going to do this one thing. Look how it broke up. It almost looks like the sea, doesn't it? I'm just going to pop some alcohol down in different directions, like as if the light's poking through. And now I'm just going to smear and soften some of these little dots. And it really is starting to look like the ocean, isn't it? Let's uh, make a wave. So I'm just going to scoop it around. I'm not doing anything really in particular and just smushing back and forth. Make a little wave. I'm not going to make big waves, just a little wave, just to give the impression that there's an ocean coming in. I'm going to take a little blending solution again because I want it a little stronger. And I'll just pull just towards the front little waves because they would be lighter to me and a little darker further away for drama. Now I'm going to blot again. Now I like using dinner napkins and such things. So, you know, they last seem to last and absorb quite a bit. All right, I'm blotting here. You can see almost a wave coming. So now I'm going to go into some of that um, alcohol and just tap it around here because it's not as strong as blending solution and I can manipulate it a little better and even bring some dark down into here. So look at how beautiful that already is. It's a nice impressionistic ocean already. And so you could stop at this point. I think it looks pretty cool. When you put a, a mat on it, it all pops. It really does. So let's just get a couple more uh, clouds and bringing them into my picture. It's a little perspective going on. And it gives that sense of movement going down this way. And I'm just going to blot. Is that the sea, the the, the, uh, the clouds go in all kinds of directions. Okay, so let's reinforce our sun. I think I like it up in here. So I'm just going to put some alcohol down. Let it sit and let's see what it gives me. Because it might give me a nice crust around the edge, which I like. And it's, it is doing so. So I'm going to leave that, let that sit. Come back here. And you want your ink to sit every now and then because it does change a little bit. Not a lot, but a little. And you can always come back and soften out any of these lines. You know, that dirty brush can be used over here. In fact, I can go into some browns if I wanted to because I got these dark areas over here. And just take that dirty brush and bring it down and I can bring back all the foam from this wave. Take some of that dark, steal it, bring it over here and reinforce the darkness so that wave pops out more and you can go back and forth just using what I got right here. But you can also use your um, your ink. So let's use a little get my palette. And I'm going to use a little teak wood and sepia. I like to mix those two colors in particular just to get a little dark and just put it back here. Because I I find that every time I make my mixes, that it tends to be the browns that come through because a lot of our colors are orange and red and green. So it all, you'll always tend to be a little brown if that's the case. Now I'm gonna take a little bit of blending solution again. And I, this time, I wanna, well, first I'm gonna blot. Oh, that looks pretty good. I might not want need the blending solution. I'm going to take a little alcohol and just touch the top of that. And then I'm going to blot that wave. 
and look how the light pops through it. It's beautiful. Again, just hit that one, let it sit and blot, and it gets a little lighter. And I just want to pull little lines back and forth. And I can adjust this any way I want. I can make a little cloud coming over here. And being lit from the sun or the moon, who knows what it is. It's whatever, whoever sees it will make up their mind what it is. I once did a painting and the woman loved the waterfall, but it was a fence. But if she thought it was a waterfall, it's a waterfall, folks. Okay, a little light there from the moonlight. I think it's moonlight because everything's kind of dark and just kind of softening. And as it sits, it will melt back into the painting. So even though it's very bright to begin with, it, it may not be bright in the end. And I'm just kind of shaping that sun a little bit. I think I would like a dark cloud on that sun coming ac across the front because if there's a cloud in front of the sun, it's going to be dark. So I'm going to go back into my teak wood and just kind of like poke a little cloud in here. And clouds come in layers, all kinds of layers. So you can always add more. And I just want to darken the ocean a little bit. I'm going to use a little sepia. Just on the sides. And I'm just pouncing. Pounce, pounce. I'm not even looking. You don't have to work hard. Maybe I wanted a little darker right in here. Because if I make this dark, this will lighten up. So I'm just going to put a few drops of dark in there. And maybe just a touch there and a touch underneath where the, the waves are hitting the sand. So you saw this, <laughs> our flower turned into a beautiful sunset or moon, moon painting, whatever. Anyway, I'm wanting to talk up back here. So I'm just pouncing that dirty brush. I work in layers. I find I get a better result that way. Okay, that's gonna be good enough for what we're doing. So lifting ink is so much fun and it's very gratifying. So consider trying that and then I'm gonna blot that and see how that's still darker cloud, but it's in front of the sun and it's got the contrast going on. A little darker here, a little darker there. And I would probably dock it all in here as well because it's bringing your vision where I want you to look. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is get a little more of the uh, teak wood and sepia and I'm gonna actually use a bigger brush and just to show you how I bring the, the darkness back in and just smush. It has that feeling of clouds it has a, a vignette -y feel, which directs you where I want you to look. And I want you to look this way, so I'm gonna direct those brush strokes, kind of like a, with a little bit more perspective, bringing it down, bringing you over. I'm telling you where to look. So you wanna remember to tell people where you want them to look. So when you're painting, look at what you're doing and say, are they looking where I want them to look? That's all you have to do. You know that the, this is going to be lit, lit up from here, so I dock it in here. All right, that looks pretty good. And now what I want to do is clean my brush out a little bit and make this a little, break up these lines of perspective that I had going on. Just break them up. They'll see them. Okay, now I want to lighten right in here with little dots and then blot. So now I'm getting a highlight from my moonlight. It'll be lighter in this case, closer to me, because I want it to be. And I might even use some blending solution 
just in there. And then blow up. And you see how it lit up really nicely. And I got a really nice strong moonlight. I like it to start a little bit darker over here. So it almost comes like a triangle outward because it blows up as it gets closer. So I can even take a little brush and pull. Use your brush to lift. Go inside here and just twist your brush. Give it a blot. Look how beautiful. And you go back and forth. You can always do it again, the lifting. Put some more light alcohol on there and lift. And that looks really, really nice. Now, if you wanted a, a sailboat, not a problem. You just put in a sailboat. All it is is a line and blot. It'll almost start turning for you on its own because the ink will move. So go with whatever the ink gives you. Remember, the light's hitting here. So now I can manipulate a little bit more and it will be DACA. And the front of the boat is a little bit, manipulate that, sh the sail a little bit. And it's almost a figure eight. Is the ship or the boat. It's like an eight, a figure eight. If you draw the figure eight in there, you'll get it easily. So you can almost see that and just lift off the front a little bit, maybe a little lighter here. And now we got a sailboat. It's that easy. So now I'm gonna take a little more of my, my sepia and teak wood and just darken right in there and shape it a little bit more. And here's my figure eight, so you can see it. It comes around and I like that. It would be down here, but I eliminate that part. But it's kind of that shape that it just help you get the shape. And cut that end off, let it be dark. Let this be a little darker. So after I get the idea on there, I come back and I, I manipulate a little bit. Maybe make a feeling of a mast up there. Just kind of make a little shadow because there'd be a shadow from this. Shadows add a lot. All right, that looks pretty good. Of course, you can manipulate as much as you want and make it as realistic as you want or keep it as impressionistic as you want. I'm going to lift off the front just to get a highlight. And this will have a highlight. And a little shadow and that's good enough now I might want a little lighter right in here so I'm just dropping alcohol and blotting so that gives it a little light coming this way and I'm just gonna pop little dots of alcohol and then blot it will melt into the picture it won't be out so strong as it looks right now and just soften back and forth with that dirty brush and maybe put a little of that darker color around it and you can shape in with with, with your dark color reshape in so the, if it's uh, a shadow it would be coming like this because of the way the moon is just back and forth And just with that dirty brush, I'll go back and forth just to kind of melt it in, make some different textures back here. So it looks like many, many waves, but soft waves. It's a soft wave day or night. Just with that dirty brush, I give it a little shadow underneath and where it's coming around. So it's gonna be lighter right in here where it billows. And you just kind of play with it. Looks lovely, don't you think? A little shadow underneath. 
and we're done on that. Okay, I like that a lot. So when I say I like something, I leave it alone. I'm just going to go into this other batch of dry ink. It's got a lot of blue in it, so I don't mind. This is what I mean. You can use all your colors, but I'm going to push that back using that dirty, cool color in there. And because it's cool, it pushes that back. It pops this forward. I can even use a little of that cool color over here for my shadow and for the waves. Now, one thing you want to do is measure where your ocean is to make sure it's the same on both sides so you're not going downhill. You can use your brush for that. Just a little dirty brush with a little of that color that is in there, on there, in there, on there, whatever. And and that what it does is makes the color go around so it's not in one spot. And because of all the yellow from the sepia and such things, this is turning kind of a greenish color, which doesn't matter what the color is for me. I'm looking for an effect. And what's more important is value and cool and warm. So I'm gonna go with a little white, I mean a little alcohol and just drop that on there just to get a little more light there. Just in between and blot. And right here I'd like it very light just because of like the moonlight hits it really strong right there. All right, I think I like that. And when I like it, I'm done. So anyway, I hope this little tutorial helps you out. Um, of course, you know me, I need to have a, definitely have a bird in here. Even if it's nighttime, I don't care. I want a bird. So I'm just gonna make V's and blot. And there you go. It's not too bright. It's not taking over. It just gives a little life into your picture. Make them different sizes. It's way more interesting, and I like to use three. There. And there you go. What a beautiful painting. Like I say, you can do as much or as little as you wish on these clouds. It's just up to you. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you need any help, don't hesitate to ask. And happy